guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, Archituber. I'm Architect Web V and I make content related to architecture and interiors. If you are new here, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel below. So till now, in the building construction and materials, we have discussed about foundations. So in this particular video, we are going to be discussing about shallow foundations. So basically, there are two types of foundations, okay? One is shallow foundation and one is deep foundation. So in this video, we are going to be discussing all about shallow foundation. And in the next video, we will be discussing about deep foundation in detail. So make sure to subscribe and having said all of it, now let us start with today's video. Okay, now let us understand about the practical applications of shallow foundation and different types of shallow foundation in detail. So what is shallow foundation? When the foundation is placed immediately beneath the lowest part of the superstructure, then it is known as shallow foundation. Basically, what is the use of shallow foundation? It covers the load that is coming from the roof to the bottom area of the superstructure. Okay, so it is a wide horizontal area at shallow depth below the ground level. The various types of foundation which can be included under shallow foundations are spread footings, grillage foundation, eccentrically loaded footings, combined footings, mat on raft foundation. Okay, so we are going to be discussing all of these in detail. So let us start by spread footings. But first let us understand about the uses of shallow foundation in building construction. So in building construction, shallow foundations are commonly used due to its cost effectiveness and ease of installation. So in breach construction, they provide stable support while minimalizing excavation and material cost. And in road construction also, it is utilized for providing a stable base under pavement layers. Now let's discuss about the spread footings. So as you can see these three images, simple spread footing, step spread footing and sloped spread footing. So what is the one thing common about these images that they have a wider base okay so as the name suggests in case of spread footings the base of the member transmitting the load to the soil is made wider so as to distribute the load over wider area so as you can see the base is wider than the other part of the foundation all types of foundation mentioned above can be covered under the term spread However, from design and construction point of view, they have been treated separately. There are various footings like wall footings, reinforced concrete, inverted arch and column footing. Let us discuss all of them one by one. Now let us start with the wall footings. It consists of several courses of bricks, the lowest course being usually twice the breadth of the wall above. The increased based width of the wall is achieved by half brick length offsets on either sides of the wall. The depth of the course is usually 10 cm. Okay. In case of footings for stone walls, the size of the offset is slightly more than that of the brick wall footing. A bed of lean concrete of uniform thickness is first spread over the entire length of wall. Then the depth of lean concrete bed is normally not less than 15 cm. Okay. And on the either sides of the wall base, it is up to 10 to 15 centimeters. In any case, the depth of the concrete bed should never be less than its projection beyond the wall of the base. The concrete bed provides a plain surface upon which the masonry work or wall footing can be started directly. It does not rectify the equalities of excavation but also bridges over soft patches in the soil below. Now as you can see the picture, first we have flat brick okay then we have concrete laid out and then we have the brickwork below the ground level which is double the column above ground level okay if you see it's 500 mm below ground level and then the column gets 250 mm then we come to the plinth level where we have again the pcc bed and then dump proof course okay and again the column continues okay now discussing about the reinforced concrete if you can see in the picture all the footings have different types of bases and the base is relatively bigger and it is bigger in width and height both so this kind of reinforced concrete will be used when there is low bearing capacity of the soil and yet have relatively heavy loading so in this cases it is desirable to provide reinforced concrete footing below the wall this appreciably reduces the volume of masonry in footing and depth of the bed concrete and 
as such proves to be economical okay a 7 to 8 cm thick bed of lean concrete is usually provided below the reinforced concrete footing to perform the function of concrete bed block now as you can see here the yellowish part in all the images are your concrete footing or the concrete lean bed now discussing about inverted arch this type of foundation used to be provided for multi-story buildings in olden times. So one of the drawbacks with this type of construction is that the NPS have to especially strengthen by buttresses to avoid the arch thrust ending to rapture the pier junction. However, the advantage is that in the soft soils, the depth of foundation is greatly reduced to perform the function of concrete bed block. And inverted arch construction is rarely done these days. Now discussing about column footings okay, or independent footings. There are two types of footings like RCC column footing and the second one is stone pillar footing. An independent footing is one which is provided under a column or other similar member for distributing the concentrated loads in the form of uniformly distributed load on soil below. Okay. So the footing may be square, rectangular, circular in plan and this is the most commonly used type of footing okay depending upon the load to be carried and the bearing capacity of the soil independent footing may be of brick masonry stone masonry rcc or steel grillage we will be discussing all of these square footing is one of the simplest and most economical to be provided under pillars column and stanchions the area of the base is calculated by dividing the total load which the pillar is subjected to and then by the safe bearing capacity of the soil. The desired base width is obtained by means of offset which runs symmetrical all around the pillar. So here in the image you can see the column and then the offset is similar on four of the sides. Okay. Now discussing about RCC column footings again which can be done in circular, rectangular or square in plan. Okay, so the depth of the plain concrete footing can be appreciably reduced by providing reinforcement at its base to take up the tensile stresses. As you can see in the image, the blue bars, the mild steel bars are there in the picture at right angles to one another at equal distances for the reinforcement. Okay, now discussing about stone pillar footing. This type of footing is similar in construction to the footing for brick pillar. In this case, the regular offset on the four sides of pillar are slightly bigger than the width and depth. Now let's learn about grillage foundation. So there are two types of grillage foundation again. One is steel grillage and second is timber grillage. When heavy structural loads from columns, piers and stanchions are required to be transferred to the soil of low bearing capacity, grillage foundation is often found to be lighter and more economical. Okay, this avoids basically the deep excavation, provides necessary area at the base to reduce the material used in construction grillage. Foundation can be broadly divided in following two categories like the steel and timber. Now let's discuss about steel grillage. So steel grillage foundation consists of steel beams also known as grillage beams, okay, which are provided in single or double tiers. The grillage beams of each tier are laid at right angles only. Anywhere there's a grillage, you will see right angles, okay? The grillage beams of each tier are held in position by 20 mm space bars with 25 mm dia pipe separators. So let's understand the components of steel grillage foundation. First is steel beams, okay? These are placed in the layers to distribute the load evenly. Then we use the concrete bed in which a layer of concrete is provided at the bottom to prevent the steel from coming in direct contact to the soil. Okay, then steel separators and spacers, these maintain the required gap between steel sections. The protective coating, steel sections are coated with anti-corrosion paints to prevent rusting. And then last, which is concrete cover. So sometimes concrete is provided over the steel section for additional protection, okay. So the advantages of steel grillage foundation is it is cost effective, load distribution is effectively for larger area, okay, then quick installation, less settlements and reusable components. Applications of steel grillage foundation, it is applicable in industrial columns, chimneys, transmission towers used in marine structures and ideal for oil refineries and bridges. So now as you can see in the picture, 
in the plan we have i bar and then the spaces all over okay and there are tiers like two tiers first is lower plate then we have the spacer then again we have the base plate okay and it is covered by cement concrete okay and then you have the gusset plate and then steel stanchion over the ground level so the timber foundation is used when you know there's a soft soil and permanently waterlogged buildings and there are different types of timber grillage timber pile timber grillage then raft or mat timber foundation then components there are timber beams okay used in layers to create strong load distributing framework then planks or boards which are used to cover the beams and create an even surface then packing material like sand gravel or crushed stone is placed between the beams to improve stability of the foundation protective coating wood is treated with anti termite and waterproof coating to prevent decay then advantages it is cost effective lightweight fast construction eco friendly and it can be done in small wooden houses cottages then temporary structures bridge abutments and jetties railway tracks in marshy areas and industrial storage and warehouses okay so now as you can see the picture we have planks at the bottom then again we have the beams then again a wooden plank and then the wall now let's discuss about eccentric footing so now discussing about eccentrically loaded footings the foundation should be so shaped and proportioned that the center of the gravity of the imposed load coincide with the supporting area of the base an eccentrically loaded footing is a foundation that supports a column or wall whose load is not applied at the center but at an offset which is eccentricity this creates bending moment in addition to direct compressive loads okay requiring special design consideration to prevent tilting or excessive settlements now let's start with combined footings a combined footing may be rectangular or trapezoidal in shape okay as you can see in the picture okay rectangular shape is only possible where loading condition is such that the either two columns are equally loaded or the interior column carries the greater load okay on the other hand in case of trapezoidal footing no such condition is applicable now coming on to the raft footings or mat footings then discussing about the raft footings raft foundation is type of shallow foundation okay but made of dense reinforced concrete slab covering the total area of the bottom of a structure as you can see in the plan the rectangle that you can see the outer rectangle that you can see is a bedding of concrete sometimes the slabs are used at the bottom and the beams at the top okay so as you can see this is the concrete bed in the section and then you, you have um bars or beams at the top this foundation is most suitable for constructing heavy structures on soft mud ground or marshy sites having low bearing capacity Raft foundation is also provided in the mining area where the structure is liable to fail due to the uncertain behavior. It gives an economical solution to the difficult site conditions when pile foundation cannot be used. This foundation sometimes is also known as mat foundation because of the RCC slab that covers the whole area of structures like a mat. Now discussing about the safety for the foundations in black cotton soil that you should be knowing because black cotton soil is an expansive soil which swells when wet and shrinks when dry okay which causes crack uneven settlement and structural damage to the foundation so to ensure such foundation safety special precautions are necessary okay so the problems with the black cotton soil is that it has high shrink swell behavior uneven settlement is there then poor load bearing capacity of the black cotton soil and then having formation of cracks is the major disadvantage of black cotton soil then precautions that you have to take are to avoid shallow foundation okay then use under rained piles or control moisture variations provide a thick sand cushion then reinforce the foundation with extra steel reinforcement use raft or mat foundations for large structures construct plinth beams okay 
then provide soil treatment provide soil treatment avoid water penetration and design flexible structures as yes, with that we have discussed about shallow foundation please stay tuned for the part 2 of deep foundation we will be discussing deep foundation in the next video if you like this video you know the drill please like comment share and if you have any query related to this topic you are welcome in the comment section below i'll see you in my next video till then please take care and bye do not forget to subscribe